Amen. Good morning, everyone. We are so glad that you guys are joining us live this morning at the Way Church. We miss you being here, but we know y'all are hanging out at homes with your family, probably in your jammies. Yes, listen, church. we're so glad that you're yes. here. It's going to be a great morning. Right? We're so excited. So Christmas has come and gone. Yes. And it was crazy and exhausting. And I hope everyone had a great Christmas. It was uh, unbelievable. This week has been jam-packed full of stuff. Yeah. From giving away presents, which was absolutely unbelievable that we were able to give away those presents and we had over 200 kids yes. get Christmas from those presents. I mean, it was awesome. The amount of people yeah. that showed up, the amount of people that were able to come through and, and be a part and, and really help in all that was phenomenal. We gave away 200 packages of multiple presents for all yes. these kids. Turkeys, hams. Yeah, groceries, groceries. So many good things. And then on Christmas Eve, we had the great privilege of delivering bikes to all those kids. It was kind of crazy getting them. Um, we had to go down to Dallas to pick them up because they weren't going to be delivered in time. Um, but we got them picked up and up here. And then you guys as a church family um, just stepped up in an amazing way in Christmas Eve after the service. Um, we got all those bikes out to those kids before Christmas morning. And it was just phenomenal. So many. And it's one of those things that Heather and I were talking about that we feel like it's one of those hidden blessings um, and, and when it first started, we felt like it was a stress. We were, we were really mad because we wanted to deliver the bikes with the presents, um, but they didn't get here in time, and then they weren't going to arrive till the 28th. So we jumped in the truck with trailer and got those picked up and everything like that. And so, uh, you know, the incredible thing is just, you know, as they – we're getting those and delivering those on Christmas Eve. We felt like, man, that's, it's not great. But then once it happened, we yes. felt like this so is something fun. that happens, has to happen it every year. It was so fun on Christmas Eve, everyone coming to the Christmas Eve service. Yes. And then getting all together and getting those out. And it was just super special. So something that we thought was just a big bummer ended up being one of our favorite things we did this whole year. A huge blessing yeah. in disguise. So it was I mean, really absolutely nice. phenomenal that, you know, we were able to deliver all those bikes to so many people. I mean, just incredible. Yeah. So we want to take the day and this morning to kind of talk about 2020 and all God did this last year and um, just how amazing it was. Yes. I mean, when you think back to 2020, um, walking into the year 2020, God gave us a word. And here's the thing. Every year what we pray for is we pray that God will give us a word that then will lead us and direct us for the rest of the year. Uh, a word that we can hold on to, a, a word that we can grab, and, and then we know that no matter what comes our way, we already know our response. We already know what we're going to do because we already have the word set. We may not know what's going to happen, but we know how we're going to respond in spite of what's going to come because of the word that God has spoken into our heart. And so this is one of those things that my family has done uh, growing up. Our, our pastor did that as we were growing up, and he really communicated and talked to us and told us the importance of having Scripture having a word, a verse that you can hold on to. And so one of those things that we want to do for you as a church, and we've been doing, is we've been trying to find these words. We've been trying to get these words and really communicate these words to you. And last year, the word that God gave us, and it's really, it's an incredible word. We had a completely different thought process, but the word that God gave us was really just no regrets. Yeah, and no regrets... Um, was something that we had come up with um, from Ephesians 
and I'm going to get it right here for y'all. Ephesians 3.20 says this, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. And in January, we had um, kicked off our building campaign, our Picture This Building campaign. And so we thought that this No Regrets was just so fitting because God had gone before us and we were expecting him to do great things with the building project that we were going to break ground in the spring. And so we, you know, typical us as humans, we have this picture of what we think things should look like and God um, ends up doing something else and has a different path for us. And Little did we know how um, important it was that we had started the year off with that challenge of no regrets. Um, because a lot of times that that's what that word um, it, for the year is, is something that um, the Lord is challenging us to do. Like Johnny had said, you know, we've already decided in advance that this is what we're going to do. Because when the moment comes of trials or difficult times, if we haven't decided beforehand um, how we're going to respond, we usually don't respond the right way. So in 2020, in January, we kicked off with no regrets, and we knew it was going to be a great year full of no regrets, and then we had some challenges. Yeah, it's crazy to think, because here's the thing, uh, vision, when God gives you a vision for your home, for the church, and oftentimes God gives us a vision for the church, and our prayer is this, that it overflows into your home. And, and so our prayer for you through all of 2020 was this, that you would look back on 2020 with no regrets. When God spoke, when God said go, when God said do, we just said yes, Lord. That was our response. That's what we did. That's how we responded. That's what we went and did. And, and so, you know, you know, like Heather said, thinking on it, we had a different uh, kind of preconceived idea of what was going to take place in 2021. We thought it, we were focused on a building and growing and God was fixing to just blow the doors off this place, do immeasurably more than we could possibly ask, think, or imagine. And then all of a sudden, 2020 started happening. And it wasn't anything like any of us had ever dreamed, like we had ever thought, like we had ever planned. And the any, interesting thing is this, vision, when you think about this, vision is seeing with your eyes closed. Sight is seeing with your eyes open. See, and what we do when we walk into something, oftentimes we walk with sight, but what God wants to do in your life and how God is operating and faith is vision. Because vision is stepping forward and believing God. It's seeing those things that nobody else can see. It's operating in a way where nobody else understands, where nobody else believes. It's for Heather and I seeing a church when there was no building. It was knowing this is what God has called us to do. And we're sitting around our kitchen table and we're scratching our heads and saying, how can this be? How is this possible? How are we going to make this work? And we see a church before we ever had a single person walk through the doors. See, vision is what God places on your heart when your eyes are closed and nobody else can see. And oftentimes the vision that God gives you is always bigger than your ability. Because what God wants to do with the vision that he's placed inside of you is fully and completely and totally trust in him. So that then you have to rely and daily when you get up and daily when you're seeking him, you're falling on your face and you're saying, God, you've given me this vision. You've given me this calling on my life. You've placed this in front of me. Now, God, help me to fulfill what you're doing. Help me to fulfill what you have called me to do. And so for us, it was no regrets. And we didn't know, it, we just knew, hey, we're not gonna look back on 2020 and we're not gonna say, I wish I had. I wish I'd given more time, wish I'd given more effort, wish I'd given more money, wish I'd loved people better, wish I'd responded better. We just said, God, we're gonna do whatever you call us to do and we're gonna be obedient. Yeah, and ultimately the no regrets came down to we're not going to have any regrets living like we're supposed to. Loving people like Jesus has called us to love people, responding to our spouse how we're supposed to, um, no regrets in leading our children and talking to our children and teaching our children throughout the year. No regrets in talking with our coworkers about Jesus. You know, we didn't want to have those moments at the end of the year of what if I would have done 
this? What if I would have told this person about Jesus? What if I would have loved this person better? And um, little did we know that God would truly challenge us in that no regrets aspect to really love people like Jesus loved people. Yeah, and so here's the thing that we want you to do for your family. Looking forward to 2021, before you get to 2021, take some time and figure out a vision for your home, for your family, for your loved ones. What is it that God's wanting to do inside of you? How is it that God is wanting to work inside of you? For us, we knew no matter what comes our way in 2020, the response is, I'm not going to have any regrets. Yes, Lord, what do you want to do? Yes, Lord, I'm not going to make excuses. I'm not going to back away. I'm going to press in as hard as we possibly can. That was what was on our heart, not knowing what was to come in 2020. We felt like there was going to be a big building out here and groundbreaking and all that. And we felt like the faith and the trust had to do with finances of raising money for a building and everything like that. And God had us going in a completely different direction because God sees into the future and knows what we need. And, and he's preparing us for what is to come without us having any clue. Because oftentimes we make our own plans, but God directs our steps. And that's what vision is. God gives us a vision knowing, hey, I've made a plan, but here's the thing. The steps may be different than the plan that I've made. I just want you to say yes, no matter what it is. Yeah, and let me warn you, when we jump into um, the challenges that God places in front of us and we decide that we're going to follow him wholeheartedly um, and we are growing closer to him, there are growing pains that come with that. I think of our kids, a lot of them are going through growth spurts right now um, and they're constantly coming to us saying that their legs hurt or their hips hurt or different things like that and it's growing pains because that's what they're supposed to do. That's what their body is supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be growing. And sometimes that's painful. And as Christians, as we walk through this, the growth is going to be hard and it's going to be scary. And sometimes we don't know what the next step is going to hold, but that's exactly where God wants us to be. He wants us to be reliant upon him in each and every step, not going the way we want to go, but going the way that he has directed for us. Yeah, that growth. If you think about this, that growth process, even though it's pain, when you think about a balloon and you look at a balloon when you first pull it out of the package and then you start to blow into that balloon, did you ever imagine the size that that balloon could get when it first came out of that package? But when you take it to a little kid who's never seen a balloon being able to be blown up before and all of a sudden you start blowing that balloon and it goes from just something that's so tiny in the package to then all of a sudden it just grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. See, what you have to understand, that growth process, there's always room for more. When it comes to your spiritual relationship with God, when it comes to your relationship, when it comes to your faith, when it comes to your obedience, when it comes to what God wants to do inside of you, there's always room for more. There's always room for more. God wants to do immeasurably more than we could possibly ask, think, or imagine. Yeah, and when we think about 2020, and as we go into our recap here of the year, Psalms 9, 1 through 2 um, really just speaks to that. And it says, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart, and I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. And um, as Johnny and I have talked about this year, um, that is really, I mean, all we can say about this year is thanking God for all he did this year, because he's the one who gave us the ability, and he's the one who went before us and planned this year. He knew what this year was going to hold. We didn't know, but he knew and he had a plan for how he was going to use it and we just have to be willing to let him work through us and um, we are so proud of our church and for our church family um, stepping up this year and doing everything that they could possibly do to love this community like Jesus would yeah 2020 literally started with a bang I mean when you begin to think about it um, we roll up to church one day and Cody's sitting back here 
And as Cody's sitting back here, um, Stan, who is the incredible man that takes care of all the flowers out here uh, in in all the courtyards that makes this place just look absolutely incredible to people, um, Stan comes walking through the worship center headed towards the back, um, helping clean some stuff. And as he opens the door, he looks and there's a guy laying on the ground in the worship center that was not supposed to be here. Yes. Asleep. Yeah. And, and so he turns around, shuts the door really quietly, walks back to Cody and tells Cody, Cody, there's somebody sleeping right here. Well, Cody, if you don't know, is always armed to the T. Um, and He's Cody will ready. draw his gun yeah. on anything. <laughs> and so Cody decided that instead of going and checking it out, he was just going to shoot his gun like four or five times in the worship center. That's why sometimes it leaks in here and different things like that. That is not true. No, no he did not do that. So <laughs> might have. Yeah, he might have gone back there with his gun drawn. He didn't have it drawn. His hand was on his hip, ready to go, ready to draw, you know, because you got to be prepared. I thought he shot we the guy four times. We all talk about being prepared. <laughs> shot him. Uh, but there's a guy sleeping back here. He had broken one of the windows. It was cold outside January, so you know it's super cold, broke in. So then the next day, we show up to work. Cody has taken uh, screws and, and screwed every window in the church yeah, no shut one, so nobody no can break in again. No one's those windows ever again. <laughs> so, so that's and, how 2020 started. Yeah, and now if you come in here sometimes, I see Cody back there rubbing his head because he's stressed about this, um, but you come in here sometimes, there may be some booby traps set up so that he knows if someone has come in here without us knowing but to his advantage he does work in here by himself in the worship center and it can be scary sometimes all the squirrels that run around in the ceiling you never know what are they gonna do i don't know but (laughs) but it did it started off fun everything was going great we were getting ready to break ground yeah we've been meeting I mean, everything had yes. gone fantastic. God, had, it literally exceeded all our expectations. Yeah. And so here comes in February and March. And as we all know, COVID hit. And um, we were not able to start our building campaign um, or start the building project. But we do want to give you an update on that because even though we weren't able to start that in the spring, it ended up being a phenomenal year. You guys, um, at the end of... 2019, um, had made commitments of about $800,000 is what you as a church committed to raise to go towards our new building. And um, when COVID hit and we had talked to our financial advisor for the building, he told us like, just forget it. You know, you're going to have to put that on hold. You're not going to get any money for that. You know, you're going to need to cut everything extra, all that stuff. And, um, and we can get into that later. But at the end of the year, this, this is just so phenomenal. Um, our church family, you guys still faithfully gave to that campaign. And at the end of 2020, you guys have raised almost $300,000 towards our building campaign. And um, we are just so just blown away by God using you guys to still faithfully give through those commitments, even when things were hard, even when the future um, was unclear and unknown and we didn't know what it held. Um, You guys see the vision of what God is doing here. Listen, just because COVID hit didn't mean that we didn't need the space anymore. Even during the pandemic, we still need space in our kids' building. We still need space in our worship center. We still need space everywhere on this property more than ever. Um, We have seen over 500 new people walk through the doors during the pandemic, um, which has been phenomenal. I mean, who would have thought that we would have that many guests in a year where everything was shut down? So um, God has big plans for that building, and we are so excited, and we are continuing on with that vision um, as we go forward in 2021. Well, that's one of those things where God said— for the church, what I want you, I don't want you to have regrets. 
And as a pastor, it's our responsibility to lead in that. But one of the regrets that I have from last year is not go ahead and going ahead and starting with that project. Because when COVID hit, fear set in and the unknown set in. And it was this unknown of financially, what's it going to look like in the future? And, and w there's some people, some financial advisor, different things like that, speaking into us saying, you need to be really careful. And so we put the brakes on and, and, and I started operating in fear rather than faith. And instead of being obedient to the word that God had given and said, no regrets, I, I lived in fear. And that's one of those things that to this day, I regret that I was not obedient to what God said, and we knew we needed to move forward because through a pandemic, churches churches were struggling, and, and it was going, I mean, they were hurting, and we were able to help other churches. We were able to help them get through this process through you, but not only that, we saw over 500 new faces come through the door in a pandemic and thousands of people watching online every single week. I mean, it is unbelievable what God did. And God was just saying, hey, don't have regrets. Don't have regrets. And that's one of those things that I look back on. But here's the thing. This next year, we're, we're going to be faithful and obedient to what God had already called us to do that we had put on the back burner uh, because we operated in fear instead of operating in faith. The incredible thing about those numbers right there that 800,000 that you had pledged, that was over a three-year commitment. And in a pandemic year, we raised almost $300,000. It's phenomenal. Yeah. So the exciting thing is, is um, as we get into January, you guys are going to get to be hearing more about that plan. We're going to be re-kicking off that campaign and sharing that vision for the building again with you. Let's just tell them now. Especially because there's so many new faces here who yes. didn't get to hear that vision back in 2019. And so we're going to get to be sharing that over time. And, um, and you tell guys them. are going to get to be in on that tell them right now come on we're gonna tell them yes right don't now? wait no <laughs> come on <laughs> i get to tell them. yeah so the plan is is that easter 2021 that sunday um especially because we didn't get to have easter last year easter is going to be yes. huge this year yes. and so we feel like we've got to do it amazing and the best way to do that is have a huge groundbreaking ceremony Come on, on 2021 somebody. Easter Sunday um, for our yes. new building. And we are excited to do that. Easter Sunday. We're going to be moving all this dirt, getting ready. So we've already started making plans, started pushing everything towards that again. Because we have to have this space. Here's the thing. Amy and Heather continue to come to us and say, hey, we need more space in the kids area. How incredible is that? Through a pandemic, we're running out of space and we just don't have room for everybody and everything that God is doing. So we're breaking ground again. We're going to be talking to you about this because all of you who are, are online right now and, and you're watching and you haven't been able to come through the doors, we want you to be a part. All of those that are new and, and you've just started coming to the church and you realize it's incredible what God's doing, we want you to be a part. And so this is something that the whole church has to get behind. And uh, we can't wait to break ground and build this incredible new facility so that we can house all the people and all the things that God wants to do. It is going to be so much fun. Yeah, we are so pumped about this. So you don't want to miss a Sunday in January because you're going to get to hear more and more about it. And it's so exciting. But also some Something that's super exciting. Um, as a lot of you know, last year before the pandemic hit, um, Johnny and Pastor TJ were able to go to Ghana and to um, go into the villages and to meet the people of the village that we are sponsoring as a church to put in a water well, to put in a church and school building, to put in a grinder and provide a pastor and a teacher for their village. And um, we have been so excited about this. They are phenomenal. Um, and during 
during this and through this, we also have been able to be on TV all across Africa. Come on! Um, because of Maranatha TV and yes. Bishop Odai and um, just got to share the love of Jesus with them and do revivals during that time. Um, and then it didn't end there. It came back and we are still on TV there sharing God's love and be they are a part of this ministry yes. with us as well over in Africa and it's just phenomenal. Um, but you guys have been continuing to give to that as well. And as soon as we can in 2021, we are going to be taking a team over there to dedicate that water well um, and get to see those people again. Um, and so share Jesus with them and have another revival and love on those kids. And it's going to be so much fun. So right now you're going to want to be making plans to be on that trip. Yes. Listen, it's one of the most incredible things that we were a part of. Getting that fresh water for them is absolutely unbelievable. Bishop uh, Odai is just an incredible man of God, and we are incredibly grateful to partner with him, with Maranatha. Um, and one of the things that he did, I remember, it's one of the most moving things that I've ever been a part of, is when he was, we went down there and we were dedicating a water well, um, and when we got down there, the water well, we were all standing around the water well, and he told me a story right before it was dedicated. He said, the government has come in and seven times they have dug down trying to find water for this village. And it has failed every single time. And the government has given up. And the village came to Bishop because they knew Bishop put in water wells. And they said, Bishop, will you come put in a water well? And he said, absolutely. And they said, well, the government's tried seven times. And he said, that's all right. I serve a God bigger than any government. And he showed up and he said, I'm, I'm going to dig, but I'm only digging one time and we will hit water. And they dug down and the first time they hit water. And we were standing around that well and all the people there were celebrating. All, all the village came out for this water because the water that they were drinking before was making them blind, making them sick, giving them disease on their hands. Uh, I mean, where we baptized people, you'll see this photo, but where we baptized people, um, they actually, cattle were walking in the water. They were bathing in that water. They were swimming in that water. Uh, but there was also, that's their drinking water. It's not purified. It's not clean. There's trash floating on the top of it. There's a film on top of the water. And that's every day they go down and they get that and they drink that. And so now they're getting fresh water for the first time. And Bishop stands up in front of everybody. And he looks at them and he says, your government has tried to get you water. And they failed. You have prayed to other gods. You have brought in your voodoo priest and they have tried to get you water and they have prayed over these grounds and nothing has worked. And he goes, but I'm here to tell you that there is a God in heaven whose name is Jesus Christ. And he is the only God that can provide water that will last for a lifetime. And he turned on that spout and he said, give your heart and your life to Jesus today because he is your only hope. Your government can't save you. Your gods can't save you. The only one that can save you is Jesus. Yeah. It was unbelievable. I hope yeah. right now you are clapping in your living rooms because that's what God's doing. And that's what God's doing through us in Africa when we get to dedicate these yeah, wells. Yeah, you get to be a part of that. Um, and if even if you can't go to Ghana, you are a part of that as you come here to the Way Church and you give to that. And that water is not only changing their lives physically, but spiritually, because they get to see what that water represents and see their desperate, desperate need for Jesus. So we are so, so thankful for you guys continuing to give to that um, and all that has come from that. There are going to be so many people when you get to heaven lined up thanking you yes. because of what you did, things that you can't see right now, things that we can't even see um, right now, and think stories that we won't even know till we get to heaven. And we... Um, 
um, are just honored that we get to be a part of this and be a part of that ministry as well. Yeah, listen, the other thing that happened that was incredible is when COVID hit and we didn't know what was happening, things got shut down, um, you, you know, we started looking around, what can we do? Um, one of those things was financially, we just didn't know, we didn't know where it was going to turn. Were we going to just kind of fall off a cliff and we didn't know how we were going to make it? How would you respond? And, um, and and so one thing I sat the staff down and I just told them, I said, listen, here's what we're going to do. We don't know if we'll make it through the year because nobody has ever been through anything like this before. A pandemic has never hit like this and affected the country in this way ever and so we've never been through this as a church before. I don't know what's going to happen. We might not have a job in a year. That's why I told them. And I said, but here's the thing. If we're going out, we're going out blessing people. And we're going to be the hands and the feet. And we're going to be the church. So we decided to give away food and as much food yeah. as we could possibly get our hands on. And it was amazing how God provided for this because yeah. it started out just coming up with simple ideas of how we could love our community. And so we were thinking of families who are maybe having a hard time getting meals and kids who weren't going to school and able to get lunches or dinners from there. So we just started making hot dogs. And um, we made hot dogs every Tuesday and whoever wanted to come through the line could get hot dogs. And over time that grew and um, word got out that we were doing that and we had the opportunity to be a part of groceries and uh, one pallet of groceries turned into two pallets of groceries and it just kept growing and growing and growing and um, for 21 weeks we gave food out on Tuesdays to our community and um, by the end of it we were giving out 20 pallets a week a week of food um, 600 meals you have no idea how many hot dogs Ron Cox who is incredible yes stood out in the hundred degree weather every single week because this was midsummer making hot dogs i'm sure he will never eat another hot dog again <laughs> for the rest of his life but here are the numbers that we have for you seven thousand one hundred and ninety meals were given out a hundred and fifty nine thousand pounds of produce were given out sixty seven hundred gallons of milk forty seven hundred pounds of meat 2,000 Lunchables, 625 extra bags of groceries that we had a team delivering to some of the apartments here in town for people who couldn't get here. Um, we gave 600 bags of food to the schools for them to distribute to kids who needed groceries. And we had a team of people who made weekly meals for the homeless, and they made 450 meals over that time for homeless people in our community. It was just phenomenal. Unbelievable. Um, it was one of the hardest things we've ever done. We had people, you guys showed up week after week to volunteer and help us um, do that. It was hot. It was long days. Um, those pallets of food were very heavy. Multiple times we had them fall off the truck. <laughs> And so um, we had lines down Taft of people to get in here. Um, but ultimately, as a staff, we've talked about this so many times, it was by far our favorite thing we did yeah. this year because of the relationships that were built with the people who came through that line. Um, we had people every single week that we got to pray with, that we got to share the gospel with, we got to get to know. Um, some of them are coming to church here now. Um, some of them are watching online still weekly. Um, and we are so thankful for all of them and um, love all of them. And we have had so much come out of that. It has been a blessing to us in return. Yeah. And so one of the things, you know, just as you begin to think about it and you begin to see all that God's done, one of the cool things was just watching how big that line was and how big that line continued to grow. 20 pallets lined up down through the parking lot, cars all the way out the parking lot, two lanes, all the way down Taft to Hickory and then all the way down Hickory. Uh, sometimes a mile long is how long cars were waiting in order to get in here and get food. That's the blessing that you were to this community. And we were able to pray for those cars and those people as they would come through. Cool story, just meeting people. Um, TJ and Cody were able to do a funeral for one of the guys who came through the line. He ended up passing away and the family came. They didn't go to church anywhere. And they said, can we have the service here and can you do the funeral? Because my husband came through the line and every time he came home, he would talk about y'all and what a blessing y'all were. 
And, uh, and so just, I mean, phenomenal what God did through a pandemic. Yeah, and this is a testimony of you and your generosity of um, your finances, your generosity of your time, of your service, um, of just the sacrifices you guys gave so that we could love on our community. Um, someone who came through the line weekly ended up messaging us, and she said this, I am so proud of your church. What a shining example of God's love. I've lived here my whole life, and no one else compares. And... Um, that's just a testimony to you guys um, and all that you guys have done for this community. Yeah. Listen, one thing that we were able to do when all this started, we didn't know what we were going to do with our students during the summer. We normally go to Falls Creek. We weren't able to go to Falls Creek this year. Um, and so we came up with the idea to have a camp, but not just for our church, to get all these other churches that weren't able to go to their normal camps, get them together. So then these kids around our community, even though they may go to different churches, they can come together worship and then they go back and they make a difference where they're at and now when they're walking down the halls instead of being strangers now they're friends and they can begin to encourage each other and help each other the youth group has over doubled since last year because of this we have um these unite rallies which we're yeah. having one wednesday Yes. Uh, we want your kids and all the kids that you know to come and be a part of that. It, it's Wednesday been phenomenal. Wednesday at 630. Yeah, the neat thing about this is it started with the camp, and the camp was such a huge, huge success that when the kids came back and the other youth pastors from the other from the other churches came back, they said, we can't wait until next year to do this again. So quarterly, they have been meeting together here, getting together. The kids play games. They have worship nights. Um, they all take turns, the youth pastors sharing messages. And it has been just phenomenal to watch these kids build these relationships. But not only that, to see churches coming together and um, being Jesus to this community together. It's not about us. It's about the church as a whole, um, not individual churches. And that's something we are so, so proud of and we love being a part of. Um, for Camp Unite, um, it was just a great week. And um, during that week, we had 50 students um, over between that camp and the rest of the year. 50 students gave their heart and life to Jesus this year. And Come on. Um, that has just been yes. huge. And so, Listen, the so numbers, neat. what God has done through salvation this year absolutely blows anything we have ever seen done before in a pandemic year. And so between going to Africa, preaching those revivals, Camp Unite, and then all that God has done now that we're online and we have so many people tuning in online in every service here, we've seen over 800 people give their heart and their life to Jesus yeah. this year because of the ministry of the Way Church. Yeah, it's been phenomenal. So we have a couple more numbers that we want to give you real quick just as a recap for the year. Um, we had 120 Dream Team members members who still faithfully showed up every single week to serve in kids, in worship, in media, in hospitality, in the parking lot, um, in all different ways. We had an incredible um, camera team step up and have to do some things that we didn't plan on doing this year, going live and having to reach everybody on different platforms, and they have just been phenomenal. Um, we also were still able to do way groups. Some of them looked different. Some of them were on Zoom calls. Um, some of them were here in person, but we still feel it is important that people build those relationships and people get discipled and that they grow closer to the Lord um, no matter what is going on. We had the incredible opportunity to be a part of the citywide prayer night here in Sepulpa that they did this fall that our worship team led, the best amazing worship team yes. ever. And we had people from all over the community come to be a part of that. And that was just an incredible experience. Um, and then, like we said earlier, we don't want to forget about the over 500 people that walked through the doors this year that were first-time guests and the 200 kids that we were able to give gifts to this Christmas thanks to your generosity. Um, we had 95 salvations here just in the Way Church um, building and room, and we had 25 baptisms, um, and it's just been a really 
incredible year. No, it's been phenomenal. And so what we want to encourage you with and what we want to leave you with is just this. As we looked at the year, our thought and theme and the direction that God wanted to take us was no regrets. And we tried to press into that as hard as we could. And we tried to do everything that we could to look back on this year and say, I don't have any regrets. We have given everything that we possibly have. We have poured ourselves out so that God could be glorified, so that God could be honored, so that people could get saved. As you look to 2021, our prayer is this, that you will begin to look and to see what is it that God wants to do in my family. And I'm just going to ask you to pray a simple prayer. God, give me a vision, not sight, not what I can see, but God, give me a vision. When I close my eyes, give me a vision for my family. Give me a vision for my marriage. Give me a vision for my life. What is the word for 2021 that you have for me? And here's the thing, that word will take unpacking. You won't know the full weight of that word until you're sitting in this spot in 2021. And you will be able to see how God revealed himself and how God worked through the word that he had given you. And so what I want to encourage you to do is to take that word that God is going to give you and to be obedient. Here's the thing. You don't know what's coming, but when you have that word, you know the response that you're going to give. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how the year is going to play out. But I know my response is going to be in obedience to the word that God gives me. And so begin to pray and begin to ask God, God, what is this word for us Next week, we'll be sharing about the word that God's given for this house for 2021. What is it that God wants to do through this church in 2021? We won't understand and fully know what that looks like until we're sitting in this spot next year. But I promise you, even though we may not be able to understand, we're seeing with vision, not with sight. And we know the response that we're going to give. And so right now, wherever you are in your home, if you're watching on TV, wherever it is, Man, I just have to ask you a simple question. The greatest thing that could ever happen is for you to give your heart and your life to Jesus in 2020. Don't leave 2020 with any regrets. Don't leave 2020 wondering, do I know Jesus? Do I have a relationship with him? Have I given my heart to him? And so what you can do right now is you can give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ in this moment. All you have to do is acknowledge that you're a sinner and that Jesus is your savior. And so right now where you're at, I want you to know that the way church, even though they're not with you, man, they are saying this prayer out loud with you. You are not alone when you walk through this journey. You have a church that loves you and that is here for you and that supports you. And so right now, if you want to give your heart to Jesus, just pray this prayer with me out loud. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus is the son of God. I believe that he came to the earth, died on the cross, and rose from the grave. Jesus, save me from my sin. Come into my life. Be Lord of my life. Thank you. Thank you for giving me an eternity in heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer right now, there is a number on the yes. bottom of the screen that you can text. Text that number that you got saved so that we can follow up with you. Yes, text Jesus to 918-201-1776. Or you can message us right there on Facebook if you're watching live. Um, be sure to comment and let us know that you were here. We want to say hi to you. And we are so, so glad that you joined us this week week. Also, next Sunday, you will want to be here. Listen, it's January 2021. Fresh start. Who doesn't love a fresh start? Um, invite your friends. Bring your family. You want to be here because it is going to be a kickoff of an amazing year. Yeah, listen, the year starts and the way that the year is going to go is the way that you determine and what you set in your heart. Man, determine in your heart that you're going to be in the house of God and that you're going to be a part of the people of God doing what God has called you to do. 
do not miss what God's doing right here. It's been a phenomenal year. Yes. We're so grateful that we get to share all that God's done, and there's so much more. You're going to be getting some stuff in your hands so that you can see it and read through it. But know this, man, God wants to do exceedingly abundantly more than you could ask, think, or imagine. God wants to work in your life. Let him work in your life. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Have a happy new year, yes. and happy we will new see year. you next year yes. right here in person Yep. online 9 for 2021 or 11 o'clock be here we love you we love you